¡Coño! Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner, host of The Wedding Biz, and this is an episode of The Next Level, in which I have a guest co-host, and together we talk about the interview of the week, and suss out a few key topics in order to help translate them into some specific tactical strategies that you can use to bring your own business to the next level. And before I introduce today's guest co-host, I want to mention that last week's interview uh, before the holidays was Reem Aradaki and Greg Fink. Reem is a wonderful bridal gown designer out of Paris, and Greg is a phenomenal photographer out of Paris also, who was on the show and who happens to be Reem's fiance and general manager. And we had as our guest co-host on The Next Level, Carrie Goldberg from Harper's Bazaar. Really great couple of interviews, so be sure to check those out if you missed them. And today's guest co-host is Sean Lowe. Sean, welcome back yet again to The Wedding Biz. Thank you, Andy. I just love doing this. So the more times you have me, the better. Oh, yeah. No, I, I love it. I have you on so much because I think you're incredible. Sean's consulting firm, if you're not aware, is the business of being creative, which is focused on providing practical advice to those in the business of being creative. Sean's client list includes the who's who of the wedding industry and design community. And we had a phenomenal conversation released earlier in 2019 in February. So be sure to check that out. And uh, Sean also has a wonderful blog and is a just absolute wonderful consultant who I highly, highly recommend. And so today's guest, and you got to listen to this interview if you missed it on Monday, is Klain Gessel, an award-winning international photographer. Klain's images have been featured in dozens of magazines, including PDN, National Geographic, and Smithsonian. Klain was also inducted into all of the National Geographic Fine Art Galleries across the world, an incredible honor. And so, Sean, this was obviously such a different kind of interview, wasn't it? He really got vulnerable. Very much so. I really, I loved that he did. And I loved that he was using his vulnerability to drive us forward into why he does what he does. Yes. And so, let's start talking about it. You know, one of the uh, first parts, it was early in the in interview. I'm, I'm going to, I, I kind of took some notes on this. I want to just say it for those who, who did not get to hear it on Monday, because this is a really just great thought. Klain said that he feels a lot of people live in a world where their expectations are not in complete alignment with how they feel. And, and he was saying, your life is exactly how you allow it to be. And if you're unhappy with your life, you're allowing it to be that way. So, if you're healthy and you have the ability to do something, then you can change the situation you're in, but you have to do that by accepting things exactly as they are first so that you can then take accountability and ownership of those things and then start to change them. I mean, Sean, that's the, that's the tenets of psychotherapy. Oh God, yeah, absolutely, and it's a, and what I I I know that uh, no clean and know that he has that perspective, and I'm so glad that he has it at such a young age. Um, but it's a lifelong process and a lifelong mission because we always get caught in circumstance, and I think that trying your best to be self aware, right, with who you are and what you are and what you may want for yourself, is its own reward, right? Um, and I think he, he expresses that really, really well. He does. And I, I like how he talks about, also in, in that part of the interview, living now in the present. And, and the way he framed it was that living in the moment, which is such a struggle for us, and I certainly deal with this too, where you're not thinking so much about the future or the past, because thinking about that brings unhappiness and anxiety. Again, it's the way he framed it. He's not just saying this cliche, you got to live here in the moment, don't live in the past, don't in the future, but he's He's been clear, and I agree with him, that that when you go there, I would say it doesn't always bring unhappiness and anxiety, but it sure has the potential to. And, and so, to try to, um, you know, again, do what, what, <laughs> what we all on this planet are trying to do is just be here in the moment, just in the present. Well, yeah, and I wanted to take it a step into the other place because we are all works in progress when it comes to the levels of consciousness where, you know, you can be deeply conscious about where you are and what's making you unhappy and what is it you want for your life and how to do that. And then you can also be just completely blind to kind of the dichotomies from which you speak, right? And and anyone who listens to it, which I find, because remember, I'm always listening from the business side of things. I'm always listening to kind of what it is that it's about there. And I are so 
value and appreciate Clayton's, you know, background that he comes from business and he wants to be a communicator and how he's about to do that. But it's interesting to me that he talks so fervently about breaking rules and using the camera to stretch the reality of what it is, right? And effectively knowing the rules so well that you can break them and then ascribes to business, you know, just knowing how to run a business, right? And that there are, you know, hundreds of years of running a business. And what's fascinating about that is that I just don't agree with that, right? And, you know, Clean and I have had many conversations about it, about what is possible. And then, and so, and yet you put that together with his, what he's talking about so profoundly as psychotherapy and and the, the ability to be, be present and the ability to kind of really know what you want to create, which makes him so, so, so special as a photographer for what he wants to do, screams for the idea that his business should be incredibly radical. And, you know, Clayton and I talk about this all the time. And so that's interesting to me that that dichotomy still lives within him as it lives within us all, right? So it is certainly not an indictment on Clayton. And and if anything, it's more of a praise because he's in that, he's in the idea that it is a process of uncovering, right? And that process of uncovering is what makes him what he is as a photographer and will also make him what he is as a great business person. Yes. And having continuing with that, he was saying, you have to understand vulnerability and be vulnerable in order to understand art. Yeah. And, and he goes further by saying, you can't know the essence of love without feeling the lack of it. And, you know, he feels he sees things in a different way that he applies to his art, to his photography because of his experience. Again, people, if you listen to the interview, he had, a really rough upbringing. I mean, look, mm-hmm. we've all had challenges, but his his was at least unique in in terms of the experience that I've heard about with people. And so he's saying, you know, therefore, the greatest honor and the greatest duty is to give that to others. Yeah. Well, and I find what's really profound about what he shared, and he shared that, you know, he walked away from his church and his family and and everything else that was there, which was, again, the theme of today and the theme of what he was talking about is rules, right? And so, here he was, he just was like, I cannot live in this this rigid structure. I have to be, be able to break free from it. I don't, I can't be in this way that you're ascribing for me to be, right? Um, which is just a profound lesson for his life. And obviously he went so far as like, I, I mean, it's kind of nuts that he went and lived out of his car for the better part of nine months, right? And decided like, you know, and was lonely, deeply lonely, um, as he expresses, which is that, that, you know, from there, he's getting that, you know, really deep idea of what he wants is meaningful connection yes. and that he brings that to his clients yes. is so crazy it's awesome and it's all about you know unwillingness to to kind of conform to a rule um and yet know the rules right so it's 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 a deep deep thing yeah and in terms you know you started talking about his relationship with his couples he says that you have to get to know how a couple gets along their vulnerabilities how they love how they interact and so, if you want to create artwork, you have to get inside their heads. And, and any good relationship, whether with the couple, your spouse, a business partner, is about setting and managing correct expectations. And he goes on to say, you need to feel a connection with them in order to work with them and be able to reach in deep. And again, understand their vulnerabilities, get to their essence. And when, when you understand these things about people, you can really bring out their light. Yeah. And what's so fascinating about that is like, what's, you know, he is, if you look at what Clean does, obviously, and how he is, the, the images are so big and so grand and so much a moment in time, right? Of, you know, of nature and the couples and that expression. And so you would think like the juxtaposition between that and a portrait artist, right? Whether a photographer or a fine artist who can capture that, the, the, the physicality of a person, right? In their work, um, would be be, there would be completely opposite, right? And because it's his claims are so big and the and you know they are part of this larger universe, right? And yet they're exactly the same according to, to Klein, which is to me, that's like the the most, you know, okay, my jaw is dropping now, right? Kind of thing of what he was talking about, right? He just happens to spread the essence of somebody through the grandness of his image, right? But 
the, the, we don't usually think of it that way. We usually think of like kind of what Annie Leibovitz does when she gets up close and personal and then, and then shares kind of that image, right, with you that's just about the physicality of the person, right? And so, he's doing the same thing. He's just expressing it in a different way. And that, to me, is what he's talking about when he's talking about fine art. Yes. Well, and, and, you know, you were talking about capturing the essence, you know, he, he does say capturing the essence of, of their wedding in one photo is fine art to him. And I mean, maybe Sean, cause I know you had a lot to do with him coming to this idea of the, of the one shot. Can you, you want to describe that to everyone listening? What, what he's talking about? Yeah, I think that what, you know, what Clean and I have talked about forever is that, that one, he gets paid for creating one shot, the idea that he will find that, that essence of the couple and not just in a way that's just is art in the sense of like him capturing who they are, but in the grandness of it is like, that is, that is a, you know, something that, that they want to have on their wall. Just like if they went out and bought any kind of piece of art that they wanted to put on their wall, which is be an expression of who they are and what they want to be. And so that's the idea of what he's talking about is like, it would belong on their wall and his clients happen to be, you know, very, very fortunate. And so if it belongs on their wall, it might belong in a gallery it might belong in a museum right and there's no difference to clean right it is that personal to them and that personal to him right in that way of him saying i am creating something that there is no difference between you know a fine art photograph you would hang on your wall a fine art portrait a fine art you know whatever it is right piece of wor- work right and so he's after that he's after that thing that they can hold on to and say okay that's that's something i need to have to share with myself every single day and wake up and walk down the hall and and see it right um and i love that for him right and that's what he's about and that's what he's saying i'm going to create and so he's he's gambling right he is the biggest gambler there is in the sense of like he thinks he can get it right Right. he thinks that it's going to be there for him and as he said which i love like any gambler hopefully if you know more than the other you might it works out for you most of the time but sometimes it doesn't right and like he says the sometimes the reason it doesn't is because they don't give him permission right to become what they need him to be right and what he needs them to be right so which is just open and vulnerable and honest and if you if you want you know what 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 i really love about what clean is saying is that if you look over and a client says, well, we want that, right? We want to be that. We want to put ourselves in that, right? Well, then that's just derivative of what he's already done before. And he doesn't actually want to do that, right? So he's like, that's what he's saying is that that's the fail. Is if he can't get somebody to express themselves so that he can create new art where he is today, then he's just going to live in, in a derivative version of himself and it, it yeah. kind of drives him nuts. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And, you know, as far as some some of the technicalities of this, you know, he like you all got to go look at the show notes, you know, where we've got some of these pictures. And and I saw a whole book of mm-hmm. these one shots, which is <laughs> it do feel like I'm walking into a, a certain kind of a photographic museum. But he basically, I, you know, I was asking him details, uh, you know, not only about the, the essence of all of this that we're talking about, but, you know, just the the physical environment. He says he scouts out the area uh, where, you know, around the ceremony, around the reception, or just in the general area, uh, part of the, of the world that they're in, to find also, after he really gets to know them, to find this one spot, again, the physical environment, that can encapsulate their love, and also his understanding about light. Not to go there right now in this conversation, you, know, you can listen to the interview, but he talks a great deal about understanding light, which he learned from his landscape photography experience, and understanding where the right angle is, and, and the light that's there, and he'll be there for hours to see where's the light coming and what time of day. And, and again, he's inspired by this experience with the couple really understanding who they are through their vulnerabilities and then having the couple be there and grabbing again, the one shot that encapsulates all of this, the essence of who they are. It is just, it's mind blowing to me. And it, the, the, I, there's so much feeling, so much emotion I feel when I look at these photos, he it, it just brings me right in. Yeah, well, it's interesting to me, as much as it's about light, that I actually didn't hear light. What I actually heard is the juxtaposition. Just part of it. But well, yeah. it is. But uh, to me, the, the importance is this juxtaposition to dark, 
right? Mm. That's what's so good about what he is as an, as an artist and what he's after, right? Is that place of duality, right? And how do we use light, you know, within the shadow of the dark, right? Because we are all both, right? Is what he's trying to say. And that's what he's trying to express as an artist, which is so amazing, right? We all have different, different shades of it all, right? And our relationships, ourselves and, and the world itself, right? Is that, is that, that juxtaposition. And so he's just trying to find, and that's what the one shot is all about. You take all those things that are mixing around and you put them together in this one moment on the earth and you say, that's yours. Right. Mm. And so I love that. I just think that that is, is, is its own thing. And look, maybe others can do it. Maybe others are out there doing it, but he's pretty damn good at what he does. Right. And yet he also is deeply respectful of those that are telling stories in a different way. Right. Those that would be more of like slice of life and slice of the moment and journalism style and, and that kind of classic, um, kind of capture the, capture the moment. He's just not that. Right. And like he says, he has people that do that for him because that's not what he's after. Right. Um, he's after that one place where I can take all these things and juxtapose light and dark and say, there it is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Well, Sean, thank, thanks again for uh, joining me with the show. I knew when I was listening back to his interview, I knew that you would be perfect for, for this one. So thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And to give out your website uh, to everyone, it's thebusinessofbeingcreative.com. And your social media handle, can you remind me what that is, Sean? I always forget, but it's either Sean Lowe. I think it's Sean Lowe one, and that's on Instagram. And, and <laughs> you're so and, uh, funny, yeah. I, I wish I'm better at it. You're not huge in social. Well, look, I'm going to tell everybody: go to Sean's website, thebusinessofbeingcreative.com, and sign up for his weekly newsletter, which you can get emailed. Um, and and because it's it's really incredible. And as far as Clayne, Clayne's site is ClayneGessel.com. It's C L A N E G E S S E L. His social media handle is also Clay Gessel, and all of this is in the show notes if you missed it on um, the spelling or whatever. And also follow us at The Wedding Biz and be sure to subscribe because you'll get notifications when a new episode comes out. And if you enjoy these episodes, it would mean so much to me if you can share them with your friends and your colleagues. Certainly this particular interview uh, can go to people outside of the, in, of the industry very easily. Really is thought provoking also want to thank the sponsor for today's episode and it is Kushner Entertainment if you want outrageous incredible music that also is has a very high touch service go to kushnerentertainment.com and we'll catch you next week on the wedding biz Woo!